Another month and that's a ton more games out on mobile. We've sorted through them to bring you the best. I'm Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 10 best new iOS and Android games of December 2017. Quick disclaimer, as per usual, we do two lists. This is the first of the paid games for the month. A free list is coming within a few days. So without further ado, here are the premium games. Number 10 is Oddworld New and Tasty, a remake of the original PlayStation game that first appeared on the PlayStation 4 a few years ago. It's somewhere between a remake and a reboot. A lot of the less strong stuff in Abe's Odyssey is just not in the game anymore. Instead, concentrating on what works and even expanding upon it, including some new content and some new mechanics. It's unexpected, but it's very welcome on account they made a lot of odd world games and what works and what doesn't is very apparent at this point. That experience was put into this game and unlike with the Star Wars movies, going back and changing things here is a benefit. The only contention I have is kind of the controls, but I don't know how they could have done a lot better. It's kind of a precision platforming game, so on mobile the controls are always not going to be perfect, but while they're not perfect, I wouldn't call them a detriment to the game. It's one of the classic and it's better than ever. Also, it's compatible with controllers, so if you have one, I would say use it. Number nine is Life is Strange, which has taken quite a while to come to the iOS platform, to be honest. It's not too graphically intense, so one might wonder why it took so long, but still, it's a good game to have on the platform. It's also on its way to Android, and as far as narrative games, even if you don't love the teenage angst aesthetic, it's still probably one of the better examples of this type of game, and I have a lot of fun with it. I certainly wouldn't mind being being able to slowly progress through it on my own time instead of setting aside time to go back to it on the console. In fact, that's probably the reason why I haven't played it lately. This is an incredibly convenient release, and I look forward to when it's out on Android as well. Number eight is Gorgoa, which, hey, guess what, is an actually unique puzzle game. The concept is you basically have four panels, and each of those four panels can be, well, let's just say changed in ways that you don't expect. It's really tough to explain because it's such a visual thing. Speaking of which, the art in this game is very well done, hand-drawn, pretty pictures that work to create an aesthetic that encourages you to interpret, which is good because it actually is fairly heavy on visual metaphor. It's interesting because there actually is somewhat of a narrative, and it does actually have something to say, while also being an utterly mechanically unique picture matching game. And trust me, when I saw it first, I was a bit skeptical, but I tried it. It's really, really a different experience and not anything like any other puzzle game. I would expect that it gets copied. It's that kind of game. Number seven is Animus Standalone, a game that is very obviously inspired by Dark Souls. You literally have to look at it for a second to understand that, but you'll also glean that the combat is a little bit faster. Being this is a mobile game, I think that is a phenomenal choice choice because they retain the type of heavy feel of the Dark Souls combat, however they've sped it up just enough to where it's noticeable. Graphically speaking, I'd put it in with the original two Dark Souls games. It's really not that far from it. It's got these great short little cutscenes introducing enemies, and more importantly, it stays very, very smooth as you're playing it, which is important because it is a precision game. My one minor complaint is the controls, maybe a little bit too much going on, but not enough for it to be a big problem, especially once you've gotten used to it. Or again, if you have a controller because it does support them. Honestly, I would like them to port this to a console. It's that good of a game. I enjoy the hell out of it. Number six, Ruya, which is a puzzle game where you match little multicolored characters in a dreamscape. The game is meant to be a calming experience, and I would say that it does this very well. It's not particularly difficult, however, it's not easy either. It's one of those games where it has a decent difficulty level, but that's not the point. The point is how the game makes you feel, which is tranquil, and I think that it does a great job in doing exactly what it sets out to do. It's fun and a calming experience. Number five is The Uncertain Episode One, The Last Quiet Day, which is your classic style 3D point and tap slash point and click adventure. There's a little bit of a kind of restricted free motion involved, but I wouldn't call it free roaming. It's not like an open world game. It's a game in which robots inhabit the world and humanity destroyed itself however long ago. You're a robot who is curious about this and wants to learn about it despite the fact that it is banned. 
to do so. In my opinion, a good setup for a plot, especially when you consider that there is a robot wanting to learn about supposedly irrational humans when the entire world has deemed itself entirely perfectly rational and that it's impossible to destroy themselves. However, even in the trailer they give a little bit of that away, it's not as perfect as it sounds. Personally, I'm interested in where this goes. I think it's the kind of story that maybe we need to start trying to tell a little bit more, and it ends with an interesting cliffhanger that does make me want more. Hopefully the rest of it is as good as the first episode, or if not, better. Number four is Carcassarone, which is a new 3D version of a game that's been out on iOS before. It's a tile-based board game with tiles that have buildings, roads, fields, that type of stuff and each player has to randomly draw one and continue to build on the world. The 2D version that came out a while ago was actually a very good version of the game, but this 3D one adds this kind of layer of visual polish that just doesn't exist in the other version. This version also adds crossplay with Steam, so you can play multiplayer with PC players. And for such a simple concept, there is so much depth, whether you like the board game, the original iOS game, or just games that surprise you with exactly how involved they end up becoming, this is a game you should try. Number three is Reigns Her Majesty, which is a pretty interesting evolution of the original Reigns. Now, if you're unfamiliar, it's basically a game where you continually get questions where you have two options, and basically plays out as if being a ruler was Tinder, if that makes any sense. Swipe right to do, swipe left not to do. Well, that sounds fairly limited, it betrays what it sounds like immediately. This is a game that is full of depth. It will just continually go deeper and deeper. Decisions have consequences. Different characters do different things based on histories. And that such a simple concept manages to do something this complex merits a play on its own, but it's also just really fun and interesting. And weirdly satisfying, too, regardless of what happens. Number two is Bridge Constructor portal which tells you exactly what it is in the name it is a bridge constructor game with portal mechanics and aesthetics basically you build a bridge in hopes that vehicles can get across it and let me just say that these two ideas merge together very well especially once you get to start doing the momentum stuff that gets introduced in portal it works really well within the context of bridge builder and finally number one is sonic runners adventure which if you can remember sonic runners which was kind of a free-to-play mess that played really fun but but that free-to-play mess was really hard to overlook, especially after a little bit of time. But when you first got into it, it's kind of like, yeah, I could do this. The gameplay's worth it. And then after a while, you're like, nope, nope, it's not worth it. Well, this is basically that gameplay, plus a little bit of the elements of Sonic Heroes, and none of the free-to-play BS. There are no in-app purchases. It's essentially the best version of this type of game that there could be, which is good because Frankly, this was a game that I was like, why isn't there like a way to purchase it? And they were like, you know what, Epic got rid of it. Thankfully, their plan wasn't just to totally drop the formula. They've given us something that's much more worth our time, and I enjoy the hell out of this. Is it exactly what a Sonic game is? No, but it's a really good version of Sonic that works really well on mobile. Quick bonus for you, there's Fez Pocket Edition that's just come out. Fez is not a new game by any means, but it is one of the best platformers of the last decade, and whether you have or haven't played it, it works really well on mobile with the world turning done with swiping and I enjoy the hell out of that. What was your favorite mobile game from December? Leave us a comment and if you enjoyed this video please click like. If you're not subscribed now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. Also don't forget that notification bell. Click that so you don't miss anything. As always thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.